what happens to the food after it is swallowed? Well, after the food has been chewed and mixed with saliva, it makes its way to the stomach through the esophagus. Interesting, right? Now, the food is prepared for actual digestion in the small intestine, which is connected to the large intestine and eventually ends in the rectum. The undigested remains of the food, along with urine, are then excreted from the body. Quite a journey, isn't it? You know, we can survive without water for only a few days, but the body can manage without food for quite some time. However, if starvation goes on for a very long time, the body becomes weak and prone to diseases. It's crucial to have both, isn't it? Let's take a closer look at the anatomy of the digestive system. We have the parotid gland, salivary glands, stomach, duodenum, small intestine, vermiform appendix, appendix, rectum, mouth cavity, and pancreas. Each part plays an important role, wouldn't you agree? So, why is the small intestine so long? Well, the function of the small intestine is to digest the food into simpler nutrients and to absorb these nutrients. If food stays longer in the small intestine, it will have more time to get digested completely and will also enable the body to absorb all the nutrients. The very long length, more than 6 meters of the small intestine enables the food to stay there longer. The finger-like intestinal villi, on the inner wall of the small intestine, help in absorbing the nutrients in the bloodstream. The liver and pancreas produce enzymes that travel to the small intestine to help break down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates into sugar. This process is known as metabolism. These boys are eating very tasty and healthy food. Whole wheat bread is good for digestion. What does the large intestine do? After the absorption of the nutrients in the small intestine, the 1.5 meter long large intestine absorbs water from the remaining undigested food and converts it into a solid mass. The solid mass of waste matter is stored in the lowermost part of the large intestine, the rectum, and is then excreted as stools through the anus. So when we swallow, the food reaches the small intestine via the stomach. The appendix, you know, is present at the end of the large intestine, and honestly, we still do not know its function in our body. Did you know that, um, the intestinal villi, if spread out flat, will actually spread over an area of about three large apartments? And when the appendix is inflamed, you get something called appendicitis? Oh, and here's a funny one. We release about half a liter of gas from the intestines every day, what we call farts. So, how is urine formed? Well, urine is a waste product, which is formed in the kidneys after the purification of blood. Kidneys contain millions of very tiny canals, called nephrons, which filter out harmful substances as well as excess water from the blood to form primary urine. Now, this liquid still contains some useful components that are reabsorbed into the body in the kidneys. The remaining fluid that can no longer be used flows through the ureters into the bladder. Once the bladder is full, we need to go to the toilet and relieve ourselves. What causes diarrhea? Stress, an unhealthy way of life, bacteria and viruses are the most important causes of intestinal problems. Bacteria and viruses reach the body via food or water and cause sickness, vomiting and diarrhea. Diarrhea is caused because the body fights against these invaders and wants to get rid of them as quickly as possible. Sometimes, with diarrhea, we have fever too, since an increase in the body temperature accelerates the healing processes of the body. What happens when we do not eat? If we do not eat for some time, we lose weight and feel tired and weak. In the absence of food, the body starts using its fat reserves. Once these are used up, and if there is still no or very little food supply from outside, the result is malnutrition. Life-saving processes in the body slow down because there is no fuel or energy to maintain them. We become susceptible to disease-causing germs. We have all seen pictures of children with bloated stomachs and very thin legs. The bloated stomach filled with water is a result of severe malnutrition. Malnourished children have water-filled bloated bellies. 